me and my family, it was about four years ago, and we decided to go Christmas shopping and we went to Salt Lake and we were driving over there and we were in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't sure exactly where, but I could see that the road was black and there's snow going around it. So the black ice was there already. So um, suddenly my stepdad had lost control of the wheel and the car had rolled and my mom had flown through the windshield. So my mom passed away that day. Whenever I would get in a car or anything, I, it was like a sudden urge to clutch at everything that was near me. And for the small moment I was in the car, it was, it was like I was in the accident again. And it was me just tensing up and I couldn't really breathe. It, I was anxious in that instant, you know, and I didn't know what to do about it. The Forge Foundation, it was something new to me. And the first exercise we did was releasing just the continuous thinking process that we have in our head, just, oh, what am I gonna do after this? Or, oh, did I do that correctly? Oh, I didn't do well on this test. It wasn't about that. It was more of taking in a breath, letting it go and letting go whatever you were worrying about or you were anxious about. So in the car, I, I'd breathe, I'd take in that breath, let go. It, it took off weight off my chest, I guess. That, that's how I felt it. And because when you hold on to an idea, you, you're, I feel like you're uptight. You're tight in all places. And that's how I would feel. And, and whenever I was in a vehicle, I, I'd feel tight. And as I let go of my thoughts, and I think I felt the serenity that they were trying to go, to achieve really the Flourish Foundation. I'm a family physician and I practice low-risk obstetrical care. Birth for many women can be very anxiety provoking and scary. Nobody can possibly prepare you for the intensity of contractions. And I've taken care of this particular patient for many, many years prior to her even thinking about conceiving and having a child. And she's dealt with generalized anxiety disorder. We've worked together on different treatment options for her. And so I was a bit worried in the beginning of, because um, pregnancy itself is very anxiety provoking and for patients with pre-existing mental health conditions, sometimes that can exacerbate that. And when I heard she was taking the mindfulness-based birth class, I thought, oh, that is, that's perfect. And when I heard she was gonna use pages or doula, I thought that's even better. Some women really clench in fear and this particular experience was the exact opposite of that. Um, she had uh, just wonderful control over her breathing. She had wonderful control over her body. She was so relaxed and everything about the room was so calm. I just remember her looking up after each contraction and kind of looking around the room and making eye contact with me and eye contact with Paige and her husband and saying, wow, that is so intense. <laughs> and then kind of taking some breaths and centering herself and kind of getting ready for that next contraction. There was just no fear in, in her uh, through even the hardest parts of labor. I just can't speak more highly of this practice. I think that ultimately it really does help reduce intervention in birth and help us provide low risk and natural births. I wished I had taken the class with Paige and had her for my deliveries. <laughs> to set the stage, we were settling into the classroom before the kids came in from recess and all of the kids came in and sat down into the circle and there was a palpable tension in the air that I noticed. And after the tone bar, we started our check-in of in this moment I am feeling and each of the kids has an opportunity to, to state what they're feeling. And we began around the circle and it became very apparent that something had gone on with the boys. They were using words like, in this moment I feel horrible, in this moment I feel bad, it, I feel persecuted even. And I thought, my, this is quite a change because this group of boys 
this class in particular is uh, generally so open and available and uh, really positive in their responses and their ability to engage. And so we plowed ahead with the lesson. We just went into what was planned and it was a great lesson on um, non-reactivity, non-reaction. And we had a really fun activity where we had the kids stick their hand into a box that was filled with slimy, kiwi, rough sandpaper, sharp objects, and they had to touch into the box without reacting within their body, their speech. As we were checking in at the end and making connections as to how they could apply the lesson to their life, I asked the boys about their comments during the check-in and the opening circle and they shared with me that there had been a scuffle with the yard duty on the playground and that they had felt she'd been very unfair and very mean and they were quite riled about it and so we took a moment and they were very quick to connect the benefits of non-reactivity and how they were thinking about it and how they got quickly emotional instead of being able to stay calm and discuss the, the incident and it was such a touching moment for me to see these 11 year old boys be able to breathe into the skills that we had learned throughout the course of the year and that day and apply it immediately to this current situation. One of our students recently had a grandmother or family member pass away from cancer after a long battle. It had been, it had been a few years down, down the road. And they did this empathy um, exercise with the kids where they actually bring a worm in and they have the kids hold on to the worms but they're being very gentle with the worms, be very quiet with the worms. And there was the whole lessons about empathy and being able to walk in somebody else's shoes. And when you start connecting those, those terms, because people hear them all the time, and once you start connecting those terms to what these kids are actually feeling every day and being able to say, how do they feel in their, in their sit particular situation? Things that become shared and the things that the kids are sharing are very similar and those connections start to happen together. Like there's, there's enemies in that classroom that don't like each other, haven't liked each other since kindergarten because somebody took a blue crayon from them in kindergarten, right? But now, because they see the similarities between the two, um, they realize that they really aren't that different. They really are really similar and they really are, they can, they can feel and they can, they can see how other people are, are feeling inside and, and they can empathize with them. And the class really globbed onto this, 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 this kid and, the, and his feelings and, we, and every student in the classroom shared about something they had lost, somebody they had lost, something. There was a lot of love in the room, a lot of love, a lot of tears. Um, I mean, if you, could, if you can picture a circle of kids, 25 kids sitting around in a circle, in each one of them sharing, and I mean, a box of Kleenexes and um, and hugs. I mean, a lot of hugs. A lot of the kids that wouldn't normally want to be touched or you know want to, you don't like the contact, and they're and they're looking for someone to reach out to and hug. I mean, you want to talk about a. It was an, it was a really cool environment to be in. It, that's a really deep, powerful connection that we we build with these kids through mindfulness. Um, that I, I believe is is crucial for their their development and just growing up in general. I think we could all benefit from a little mindfulness practice. A couple months before I joined Flourish, I got in an accident over spring break that resulted in some serious head trauma. And um, I experienced really bad uh, brain shocks, which are electrical pulses in your brain, um, and intrusive thoughts. And the intrusive thoughts were really, really serious, and they weren't anything that I could escape by myself. Um, I tried writing down my feelings and <laughs> seeing how it made me feel, and it really didn't do anything. And then um, when Flourish came along, from the first meditation, I felt instant relief. So we started off talking about compassion and happiness. And I mean, before I didn't really know the full definition of compassion, I just kind of assumed it was like, oh, you're kind to others, you're kind to yourself. But 
There's really so much depth to it, and I've learned so much at Flourish. And through our mindfulness practices, um, I've developed a much calmer sense of myself and the world around me. I can handle situations a lot better than I used to. And ever since the first meeting, I couldn't stop going. I attended every single meeting, <laughs> every single one, and I hated it when they ended. It was so hard. I was like, no, let's keep going, please. You know, um, it, it saved me, totally. I was very grateful. The serenity is amazing. I it's, I can access that anytime too. Um, just becoming aware of my breath is always there for me and doing it with people who I have developed love for is even more magical, really. <laughs> it's amazing that I can um, sit around with these people and listen to Noah or Ryan's voice and guide me through my meditation along with my peers and my friends. and. Um, at the end of it, I don't really want to talk. I don't want to stand up. I just want to sit there and be. When you come from humble beginnings, you don't really appreciate yourself or appreciate um, just seeing, you appreciate the things you have around you, but you don't see yourself as someone high and mighty and someone who can do a lot really and especially with, I now live with my dad and, you know, we're not in the best um, economic state, but, you know, there's love everywhere. And what I learned from the Flourish Foundation, it was to love myself, to love the things I have around me and see that I can go beyond what I have in the moment because the potential, as I keep saying, the potential's there, you know, for anyone who really takes it. I, I think that's one thing that they've really helped me to appreciate myself and then see that I can help people if I'm happy.